Hi everybody, it's Stuart Jeffrey here from Tacit Knowledge. Hope you're well. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I guess it's evening time for those in Europe and um, yeah, sometime in the late, late morning, um, early afternoon in the States. So thank you for joining myself and Spencer from GHD. Before we get into introductions of our roles, what we do and how we've been working together over a number of years utilizing SAP Hybris, we just want to show you a short video that depicts the GHD brand. So hopefully uh, that gave a little taster of what GHD are all about. So let's let's get into some introductions. Um, Spencer, how you do, doing? Joining me from uh, from sunny and uh, maybe maybe cold and rainy Leeds this evening. Actually, it's, the weather's not too bad, but it's all good. Thank you very much, Stuart. Um, I'm Spencer Hudson. I'm the Global Technology Solutions Manager for GHD. I've been at GHD for quite some years now, working uh, more recently on the Hybris project and with Tacit since uh, I think it was about 2010, 2011. Really enjoying it here. My role here is split into three rough areas. I take care of um, operations, I take care of development, and I assist with strategy as well. Cool. Thanks, Spencer. Um, I'll give a quick overview of, of myself as well. So, yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm Stuart Jeffrey. I head up our business consulting and engagement teams globally, um, really the, the primary contact with the majority of our um, customers um, and working with our customers through, um, through discovery phases and um, ensuring that they have successful engagements. Um, so I think before we get into the nitty gritty of, of the webinar, I think there were maybe three key um, facets that we were, you know, were trying to, um, to get through. Um, we wanted to talk about how we've helped GHD, uh, you know, reduce their operational costs, um, yeah, how they benefited through continuous delivery and deployment, and then how they've really brought together commerce and content into a community of you know, loyal shoppers and, and additional brand engagement. So I get, before we jump into, uh, we've, got, we've got a number of questions that Spencer and I have been preparing over, over the last few days. I'll give you just a, a quick snippet of, um, of TACIT, seeing as we've given a quick snippet of, of GHD. You know, TACIT Knowledge are a digital commerce consultancy. We were purchased by Logistics Group uh, back in 2013. Um, and essentially, the reason why the, the companies merged together is that you know, we're providing the digital commerce element of the company and Logistics provide the physical commerce. So we're really looking after the e-commerce platforms, the you know, the UI, the front end, the customer experience through to order management and then integration into the back end systems. And then we're providing that full end to end um, e commerce journey for our customers through fulfillment and shipping and, and returns um, from the customer, which is um, logistics core business. Tacit are a, a global consultancy. Um, we actually started in San Francisco in 2002, really grew thro uh, through stabilizing a lot of the um, you know, companies in, um, in the Bay Area. Uh, we've grown over the last you know, uh, 10, 12 years, um, uh, I guess quite, quite, quite rapidly uh, opening operations in New York and, and Guadalajara on the state side and then in London and um, Chisinau in, in Moldova on the European side um, of the pond. Um, we've been working with SAP Hybris for a number of years now, one of the most experienced and, and mature partners, or at least uh, that's what I like to think. Um, we've got uh, just over 25 customers now, actually. Um, you know, we're, we've, we've won a number of awards, quite a you know, boutique uh, consultancy. Um, you're still working with all of the Hybris customers that we started working with uh, back in 2010. GHD is actually our first SAP Hybris customer um, who we've been working with for, you know, I think, Spencer, you said five years. I think it's maybe even been six or seven years when we first started working with you. So it's been it's been quite the journey. Um, so we, I guess let's share some of that with, um, with, you know, with the guys. So um, 
you know, you've mentioned that you know it's been been quite a long long engagement. So, you know, why why did you initially choose SAP Hybris you know, back in twenty? I think it was twenty eleven, wasn't it? No, well, actually, I had to look back because the website was launched in twenty eleven. In fact, just in time for Black Friday and peak the month before. Um, but we actually started working, and this was the bit I had to actually look up. We started working twelve months previously. Um, so the engagement period actually took, was was probably over 14 months previous. It was the first time, I believe, Tacit had worked with Hybris. Um, well, Hybris as it was then, it was before it was SAP Hybris. Um, and it was, uh, you know, it took some time to build out all the systems. It was the first time we'd, GHD had actually um, gone for an enterprise system for e-commerce. Previous to that, we were working on uh, you know, a, a custom implementation based on MySQL and PHP written on top of OS Commerce. So the, the reason for wanting to go towards SAP Hybris was really for that enterprise and resilience. And having had experience working with Tacit previously, we brought you guys on board and, you know, that partnership's continued since uh, early 2010, really. And um, cool. you mentioned, you know, some of the... I guess challenges that you faced before you undertook the decision to, you know, go, I mean, it was a pretty dramatic change, you know, a replatforming of um, you know, a, a number of enterprise um, you know, systems. What were, you know, I guess, some of the business drivers behind that that replatforming that, that made you take this significant plunge? I, I think th there was one main driver and that was growth. What we needed to do was the issue that we had on our previous platform was our ability to, um, our resilience and ability to scale was limited. We weren't, we, we, were, we weren't able to actually um, build out that system quickly enough. We didn't, have a, we didn't have a content management system. We didn't have any kind of promotion system. We didn't have an order processing system. It was very basic. And every time we wanted to launch a product, Globally then, I think that we had six sites at that particular point or six stores built on top of our e-commerce platform. It was incredibly difficult for us to actually do that quickly. Uh, and it took a lot of man hours to build it out. So at four of mind, when we looked at Hybris, or SAP Hybris, was we really wanted to see how um, an enterprise solution would enable us to build that kind of growth and enterprise platform in. Okay. Um, so I think you know, another thing that we've touched upon is that I don't think you had the tools um, really for the, the business teams to be you know, too involved in your e-commerce operations. Um, I know that's really changed over the years. Could you give us, I guess, a little bit of insight of how SAP Hybris and, and Tacit Knowledge have helped you stop worrying about so much of you know the technical side of, of keeping sites alive and how we've given power to some of you, your content managers and your your digital marketeers and your merchandisers yeah actually you raise a really good point there Stuart I mean the tool set that we have now is enterprise level whereas previously we didn't really have any of that material so the ease of which I, I say ease the, the interesting thing is that those people who joined the team more recently think it's still difficult yet yeah. you know they don't see the history and the way in which it's developed um, you know it is incredibly easy now to manage 13 sites we can launch and deploy a project uh, a product relatively simply um, as an example recently we've needed to launch three sorry 16 new products on the site to a specific user group and we were able to turn that around with in less than a day and that included, you know, once we'd got all the assets, we were able to actually limit that particular product to a specific group of people and then launch that really rapidly. And previously, we, we just weren't able to do that. We weren't able to build and manage the content pages on the front end and then manage through to the e-commerce, limit that down, link that with promotions as well. So that the tools are there now within the platform. And I think the best testament that we could have um, for that enterpriseness, for want of a better word, would be that we're tomorrow we're going to be on our 180, 
38th deployment to the website or scheduled release that is. There's been lots of uh, other releases to the site, but it will be our 138th release. And that's, you know, a strong testament, I think, to the teams that work on that. The fact that ev literally every two weeks we do a deployment to the site uh, very regularly. And this is in the lead up to peak as well, because obviously we're, we've only got three working days now left before we're in our very peak of peaks. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, that's a it's a really, really good point. Um, you talked about yeah, how Hybris has helped you scale and grow. I mean, you've, you've rolled out to new countries, you've released new payment methods, new functionalities, new content, um, you know, new customer engagement tools, um, you know, really rapidly if, if we look back over the last five, six years compared to where you used to be. And I think the mechanism or process that you know, we've used together to try and get there is, is through you know, continuous development and delivery. Um, and you, to, to you say you're doing hundreds of releases and releasing at a very regular rate, which you know, many companies are, are doing today, but you know, we started doing this a long, long time ago. So I guess what, um, you know, why, why was continuous delivery so important for GHD when we embarked upon this journey? What, why did you want to go that way? And uh, what were, I guess, the main impacts that that's had on, on your business? I would say, I mean, we, with the new site, we were, you know, Agile was new to us, so we weren't practitioners of it, and it was something that we had to learn. But what taking that on board and actually embracing it and using it throughout our teams, it means that we can, we better understand the work and the delivery that we have to deploy. And that means we can manage expectations more widely outside of the business. We understand the amount of flex that is available to us as well. So, you know, at peak at the moment, um, we've noticed some issues that we want to resolve for peak, and we know that we're able to flex a little bit to actually incorporate them and deploy them before peak. And before we had the processes in place and the skill at operating those processes, it would have been very difficult for us to do it. We wouldn't have been able to understand the velocity of which we worked. And I know some of those words for people who aren't familiar with Agile, they might understand it, but understanding the cadence of what how you work is all part of that rigor that was introduced when we moved over to this new platform. Yeah, we've really moved from you know, the, the large, big releases, you know, that waterfall um, style of working, maybe maybe more traditional style, to there's small bite-sized chunks. You know, every, every couple of weeks, we are enhancing the site. There is, you know, there are new campaign landing pages. There are new payment providers. There are new, there are new capabilities on the, on the PDP. You know, we're rolling out, you know, personalised experiences. You, you said, you know, there are certain um, customers, certain segments of customers on your site. You know, through quick configuration, that you're now able to launch a new set of products, brand new set of products onto the site, and give this to a VIP set of customers with a specific set of pricing, which is. You know, in, in this day and age, it, it's still fairly agile. I think a lot of brands out there that would uh, you give their, their right arm to be able to do something so so quickly as that without um, any or, 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 or small amount of development effort. Yeah, I mean, I would say even the business had to begin to understand what we can actually do. And we, we get challenged a lot. But one, I think one of the things that people who aren't necessarily aware of this might not understand is that we, every when we're doing the deployments time after time, we're not just doing a deployment. There'll be multiple pieces of work that could be going on at any particular stage. In the run-up for peak this year, we've got a good half a dozen to a dozen reasonably large pieces of work all being worked on at the same time, being deployed in advance of peak, um, but really all being able to work together with different departments with the within the organization so that we can deploy them and bring them all together. And again, uh, the methods that we've been using and the tools that we have enable us to actually achieve that so that when we've had other jobs that have come in at, at late notice, at really late, late notice, what we can do is understand well, what, what are the jobs that we've got available how could we move them around and actually bring them in? Uh, and I think the, the, the website's a testament to that. 
Cool. Um, I guess mo just moving on from the me mechanism or the, you know, the you know, continuous integration, the agile methodology that we've deployed um, you know, to, to give you guys the, the success. Of course, that takes time. It's, a, it's been a big cultural change. You know, I think getting people, you, you made the point, not, not everybody knows what, what those, those terms mean, but you know, they have made a dramatic difference to the promise that you can make internally um, you know to your senior stakeholders and it's like they become they become just used to this now it's you know, every two weeks oh I know that something new's coming and I know that you know something that they don't have to think about it a year in advance and come up with like massive business cases um, you, you just you, they just expect it now I think yeah, that is, that is a double-edged sword, that, I must admit, that uh, people become uh, very expectant of, oh, why can't you just do this? So I think that there is a there is a, a certain amount of education that needs to take place with, you know, this isn't, it is a, a silver bullet, but not a complete silver bullet. You know, there are a lot of really good aspects to it, but it, it doesn't solve everything. You know, there's a lot of hard work from the team, and by the team, I mean not just the GHD, I mean the wider team. Um, I consider Tacit to be part of my team that I call upon. And, you know, it really is uh, all about the team and getting the team to work and bringing all of the skills from the different players. Yeah, makes sense. Um, I know, um, so guys, we, we tried to keep away from the slide where today we've, we've got a few. So um, I think as we talk about the, the next section, as we move on from you know, the piece around continuous delivery and we start to talk about some of the the functionalities and capabilities that um, GHD utilise within SAP Hybris. If we can just have a quick look at um, slide seven and, and skip through the next slides, you can see just how rich some of the the content is on, on GHD's website. It was, um, it's been responsive for a number of years now. Um, I said, this site is changing so rapidly, uh, forgetting the releasing of code every two weeks. Um, you know, the site from a, a content promotion um, offer perspective is changing, you know, many, many times a, a day and, um, and being yeah. personalized to, um, to the user that's, that's re reaching oh, nice. the, the website. So I guess, Spencer, one, one, one other question on, on this. So you're using a lot of the core capabilities of Hybris. Um, We've done we've done a lot of extension and customization work o over the years. You know, I guess for other companies that are coming onto an enterprise scale product like SAP Hybris, which is maybe scary to some organisations. You know, what advice would would you give them um, in terms of you know what what tools to focus on first, and, and generally how to attack uh, these projects without getting yourself in in a pickle? I, th I think. If I came to it again, the, the things that I would like to do, maybe a little bit differently, which is I think about as best as I can say is, I would like to look at the order process a little bit longer. I definitely want to spend a little bit more time working out how an order transacts through the system. Um, because that fundamentally, you know, how you take the cash, um, how you take the fulfillment, I think that they're central. But if I just looked at the facilities on the site, I think I would, Ultimately, it's all about the customer or the visitor of the website. What facilities do they want? And there's a lot that you can leverage from Hybris out of the box. And it's that out of the box functionality that we really like because that makes life a lot easier when it comes to upgrades. Um, the promotion engines in later versions of Hybris are really good, really, really good. Um, the ability to do B2B as well and to set up different groups and have Pricing metrics, I think, are really exciting. Um, yeah. And, you know, in the seven years that we've been using it, Hybris itself has gone through a lot of innovation. And I think the, the later versions of Hybris have, are, are really exciting. Um, you know, they're doing a lot of interesting work within the e-commerce area, and it enables us to look at things in a, a lot of different ways. Yeah. Yeah, that... Um Again, it's um, it, it is super exciting. I know on um, I know we're trying to keep away from these slides. I keep looking at them actually, but um, on on slide twelve and thirteen, I think these are the two slides 
that um, you know, best depict um, you know, sort of the, the features that you've used, how you've um, how you've aligned the capabilities, the out of the box features with Hybris with you know, your own your own needs. So, for example, you talked about you know, B two B, the fact that we're using Hybris to um, you know, give your your salon, not your salon, salons are, are, are obviously you know, hairdressing businesses, and we're able to you know, give them commissions and visibility. We're able to give the stylists um, in your salons or in your um, company um, salons the ability to add content, you know, user generated content to the site. So, um, you know, could you just add, add a little bit more flavour to? I guess that melding of you know, ops and marketing and, and, and your, your customers. Yeah, I mean, the, the site itself, we've developed a, a lot of functionality. And I think um, the next slide, slide 13, goes into a little bit more. Well, it, it does. It gives you a higher level view of the, the, the way in which we bring those different elements around. Um, we've got the different areas. You know, the, com the customers are absolutely central to everything that we do. Um, we have a lot of the online material available for them and marketing. The crossover that we've got there is we've got a huge and a very popular area on the website for social and that's where we can have uh, stylists or salons to go on and actually put their own material and their own photographs up available on the website. Um, operationally, we interact with that system that we've built out by Hybris that enables us to actually manage those content, manage those profiles. Um, we automatically apply um, promotion codes to those people so that then they can go in and buy products. We even enable it so that um, profiles of um, salons or stylists can actually then give out promotion codes to people. Um, it, yeah. You know, we've got a lot of flexibility in custom customization that we've built in. But here's the great thing, that a lot of that that we've built out of the box, now if you look at later versions of Hybris, some of that material actually is baked in, which is fantastic. Um, unfortunate for us, because we had to spend time developing it, but later versions of the software actually starting to in incorporate that. But we were ahead of the curve and we've got the benefit of that. And we're gonna continue to push those boundaries. That's that's what I think that we excel at. We're able to spot an opportunity. We work with our SI, we work with you guys, and we schedule in these little experiments to play with pieces of technology, having, of course, got sign off. Um, but more often than not, we're allowed <laughs> to do those kind of things. Um, because, you know, you've got to have a little bit of scope to be able to do them and have a little bit of um, wiggle room to experiment. You know, we're, we love being able to do a lot of A-B testing on the website. We find that ability to be strongly based on analytics so that we can understand what's happening on the website. And I suppose if if I did give a lesson to anybody with regards to what I think they should be doing is, you know, spend a lot of time looking at the analytics and how that is going to impact on your website to see how different elements of that. And, we've, you know, we've got a team of two great guys here who uh, are pouring over the numbers at all particular points in time. And, and they bring out some really interesting facts. You know, sometimes, you know, there'll be ideas that we've had that just don't work and they're, they're more than happy to point it out to us. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's been, you know, at the heart of your strategy uh, from day one that you know, when we went through this change, everything was built around data. So, you know, we look at your analytics package, we, we're taking that in information about and that's actually led on to some really cool and innovative features and I think that sort of dovetails nicely to um, you know everyone's preparing for the holiday season right now we've got Black Friday just around the corner now it's just sort of snuck up on us hasn't it we've got um, you know, the holiday season and the traditional general sales after that I mean could you tell us a little bit maybe about you know the the send a hint campaign and the hintometer and some of that cool stuff. I know we did that during the last holiday season and maybe what plans you've got coming for this holiday season. Well, actually both, both of those pieces of technology have been incredibly uh, uh, yeah, popular with our customers. Um, so send a hint was, send a hint evolved over the number of years that it's been done and the, the marketing team 
take points on that. I, I deliver the technology, they designed it. Um, send a hint to give you a, an idea is where a partner can go on the website and send a very unsubtle hint, or subtle, depending on how they want to do it, <laughs> to their partner, please, this is the product which I would like. Would you mind uh, uh, purchasing that for me? And uh, some of our customers have had great fun um, suggesting what they would want. Now, originally when we launched, it slightly changed this year. Um, the campaign was what I don't want, and the customer would fill in what they didn't want. And then they would suggest that this is what they would want. And I will leave your imagination to uh, come up with lots of different suggestions what ladies did not want and what suggestions they sent. The, the, the suggestions to the husbands were quite imaginative, should we say. All, all their boy and friends or partners, they were very imaginative. So, but it, you know, it's great to be able to have a bit of fun with your website, you know, to get that engagement with your customers, to see how they work. We offer that, you know, you can see there on the screen there on the, that you can see that we, we offer, you know, people who we don't know can come along, sign up to become one of our salons um, or a stockist. And then we encourage the customers to come along and we, via those signings, um, we're able to offer, you know, limited editions or special offers to them, uh, specifically to those yeah. particular people who come in. I mean, I would say in the UK market, um, the vast majority of people we know want to have a guest checkout. Um, but those people who, you know, those people who do sign up to account actually get a lot of extra facilities. So, you know, we're, we're, what we want to make sure is that we offer the facilities to the customers who come to the site or the visitors who come to the site. Um, and we try to offer a bit of everything to them. Um, and I, yeah. hopefully it goes off. I, I think you know, it's um, good. We, I mean, we could do a whole webinar about all of the innovative features that, that we've developed um, over the years together. But um, I think you know, the main message here is that you know, by, by choosing the right platform, using the right methodology, you know, we've been able to focus more on delivering these innovative features before peak rather than you know, keeping the site stable and you know managing p1s or, or any sort of outages so you know, our whole mindset has been sort of focused on improving the product rather than keeping the website alive and i think that all sort of like uh, ties together with with the approach and, and the relationship too yeah yeah, yeah, we don't we don't want to spend any time on keeping the website alive. We just want to assume that it's alive, and we want to spend all our time on new features on the website, innovating on the front end, making it easier. You know, focusing in the back end as well, making it easier for the people who operate the website, so it takes less time for them to to spend it. And you know, we've done little tweaks over the last couple of weeks, in fact, to make it easier. You know, changing the way in which we display email addresses and telephone numbers just to make it a bit easier for the customer service teams. And it was them who suggested those changes. They came to us and said, would you mind making that change? And, you know, what we did was we wrote it up, put it into the flow. And we didn't even schedule that. We just put it in and you guys picked it up, got it developed and it got in before peak. So again, you know, we've got a lot of flexibility where we can get little jobs, pop them in. And if there's an extra bit of time in a particular sprint that we're working on, you guys can just go in and pick them up and get it delivered. So, you know, it's a nice way of working. Yeah. Exactly. I think um, I'm conscious of the time. I know that the you know our session today, our webinar with with the audience here, we were thinking sort of 30 minutes or something like that. So, unless there are any any questions, I think I've got one one final question from from me to you, Spencer, and hopefully it's not too cheeky. Um, but at the, the end of the day, can you share with the audience you know, any data around you know, your, your ROI? So from when you're putting sort of the puzzle of you know, uh, your transformation together and you're making lots of tough decisions, um, yeah, how, how have all of those things over the years you know, generated an increase in your average order uh, values or your, your revenues, your conversion rates? What sort of growth have you seen from, from this journey? Uh, significant, significant. I, I won't give any numbers, but what I would say is that it's a testament that we've been together for since the beginning of the project, um, that we've seen, you know, that we've done the releases that we've done, 
and we've worked really hard together. And I think that, you know, if any of that was in any question, then we wouldn't be here having this conversation now. I'd be happy to take questions from people if they wanted to ask more details or, you know, get, get some nitty gritty. But ultimately, we're very happy with the relationship that we've got. And we're very happy with the website. Um, and there's lots of things I would like to share, but yes. I'll just leave it, with, <laughs> I'll leave it with a big smile and say that I'm a happy man. Good. Um, so Spence, I think you yeah, thanks for you know, sharing your advice. Um, um, sort of, you know, some, I guess, things to watch out for if um, your know, companies are thinking about adopting SAP hybrids. They're saying you, you were one of one of the first companies in in the UK to adopt. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate you joining us. Uh, you know, to to your point, if anybody um, yeah, who's joined the webinar today or who's on, on live video, if there are any questions for for either of us for Tacit or for GHD would be um, you're more than happy to to answer those if you want to get in touch with us. Um, and I think I think that's probably it, Spencer. We should bid, bid our farewells, and it's getting getting late here in the UK, so. Good night to those in, uh, in Europe and uh, have a good day for those in, in the States. Thank you very much. Cheers. Have a good one. Yay.